Okay, please stop talking. Okay. Pulmonary tuberculosis is very commonly seen in HIV patients. Okay. So we last uh, sessions we discussed about <coughs> Uh, how the pulmonary tuberculosis comes and uh, what are the mechanisms involved in formation of caseating granulomatous inflammation yeah. and what are the different types of tuberculosis like primary, secondary, tertiary and each condition what are the clinical signs and symptoms. So these are the things we discussed. So this is a special and one more special condition we discussed is isolated tuberculosis that is the tuberculosis comes in a different organ it will not start from lung okay if it starts from lung it spreads to other organ it is tertiary tuberculosis if it is not present in lung it is seen directly in the other organ it is isolated tuberculosis for example tb can directly come in spine okay tb can directly come in uh, salivary glands tb can directly come in adrenal gland tb can directly come in the meninges brain covering so that is all called isolated tuberculosis. So uh, if the TB tuberculosis infection comes in the lung, then it goes to the other parts of the body. It is the last stage of the tuberculosis that is tertiary tuberculosis. That is tertiary tuberculosis. And this is a, another special condition which we see uh, in a HIV patient. In the HIV patient, they are very prone for pulmonary tuberculosis especially when the person is living in a TB prone area okay especially in the India or tropical countries now globally people travel a lot so now the tuberculosis uh, goes to the western countries also because uh, any South Asians traveling here and there and they can take the tuberculosis if the person is HIV if the person is HIV he has high chance to get infected and produce the disease infected and produce the disease last sessions I discussed infection is something different disease is something different infection means somebody is having the tuberculosis bacteria he is infected but if he is having good immune system he may not express the disease okay so disease is something there is infection and there is signs and symptoms there is signs and symptoms the effect of the infection should be there so then it is called as tuberculosis disease okay so what happens in HIV patient is you all know the T cells right so the T cells are very very important CD4 T cells are very very important actually they produce what come on they produce what uh, huh? interferon okay interferon they produce interferon gamma so interferon gamma is needed for <coughs> three things one is they make the phagolysosome to fuse and they recruit macrophage and they also make the macrophage to synthesize nitric oxide so that nitric oxide can kill the mycobacterium understand so these are the three functions interferon gamma does i don't know you guys you girls are not studying in home Okay, people are hearing it looks like you are hearing it for the first time so what happens in HIV infection is the normal CD4 T cell count is around 500 to 1000 cells per cubic millimeter in HIV infection the HIV actually infect the CD4 T cell and they destroy the CD4 T cell what happens then the interferon gamma is reduced then the mycobacterium cannot be killed so the mycobacterium easily spread all over the body so this is what happens in the uh, pulmonary tuberculosis in HIV patient so the normal CD4 count is very important that is approximately keep it as 500 to 1000 cells per cubic millimeter if the CD4 count reduces below 350 then the person we will start actively HIV treatment as well as the person may have a chance to get tuberculosis infection so anything we should not be that's why in HIV patient treatment regularly we take CD4 count regularly we take CD4 count that is uh, the line is 
less 350 anything goes less than 350 then there is a chance for <coughs> tuberculosis infection so now there is a treatment called heart regimen they call it as that is high active anti retroviral therapy highly active anti retroviral therapy it is a antiviral drugs a group of antiviral drugs which we give for the tuberculosis patient and uh, who has hiv who has hiv and how we classify the uh, severity of tb depends upon the cd count is more than 300 but it is 300 to 500 then the patient may get secondary tuberculosis the patient may get secondary tuberculosis if the cd4 count goes less than 200 the patient may get fresh infection and they will lead to primary tuberculosis if the cd4 count is less than 60 cells per cubic millimeter and then they may get tertiary tuberculosis and there is a different type of mycobacterium called mycobacterium avium intracellulare it is called mac complex My mycobacterium avium intracellulare it is one of the dangerous mycobacterium that will get infected if the cd4 count is less than 60 cells per cubic millimeter so we classified on the basis of cd4 count if the cd4 count is like three uh, more than 300 means less than 500 300 to 500 then you may get secondary tuberculosis if the cd4 count is this is cd4 count 1 2 3 type of tuberculosis type of if the cd4 count is around 300 to 500 you may get secondary tuberculosis the person may get secondary tuberculosis if the cd4 count is yeah 200 or le less than 200 around you may get primary tuberculosis and very aggressive form of primary tuberculosis and if it is less than 60 and you may get tertiary tuberculosis by a special mycobacterium called mycobacterium avium intracellulare intracellulare commonly called as mac complex it is called as mac complex okay it's a special mycobacterium very dangerous form of mycobacterium which gets infected in hiv patient or any patient who has less than 60 cells per cubic millimeter that is what cells cd4 t lymphocyte cd4 t lymphocyte okay so what you have to understand is this infection all comes depends upon the person's immunity depends upon the person's immunity if the person's immunity is very good he may get infected but he will be in control he will not produce the disease if the immunity goes down that is cd4 t cells goes down then the different types of tuberculosis infection he gets okay so <coughs> if there is a <coughs> hiv patient and is getting tuberculosis do you think it will form a granuloma for the formation of granuloma what is needed we need t cells we need t cells we need a cd4 t cells so what happens is in the especially in the morphology you will be seeing no granuloma see here there is no circle okay it is full of flat cells and there is no granuloma it is full of macrophage epithelial cells is called macrophages activated macrophages and if you do a special stain called afb afb means acid fast bacilli staining i will be telling in the next slide so what you are seeing inside the cell is full of mycobacterium this all are mycobacterium bacteria okay so this stain is used to stain the mycobacterium so what is the most important thing you should know here is in tuberculosis infection if the person is having hiv and he gets tuberculosis in morphology you will not see the granuloma morphology you will not see the granuloma so what are the investigations we do for diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis it is based on clinical pathological and radiological investigation so clinically they have this five characteristic symptoms what are they 
fever, cough with sputum, loss of weight, loss of appetite and night sweats. So these are the classical five symptoms of tuberculosis. In the x-ray, if you see rank is complex or gone focus or gone complex, it is primary tuberculosis. In the x-ray, you see cavity in the apex, <coughs> it is secondary tuberculosis. In the tertiary tuberculosis, you will be seeing small seed-like deposits. That is tertiary tuberculosis. So x-ray will be very, very important. And laboratory investigation, we do acid fast staining. So from the biopsy, we take a biopsy tissue from the lung or we take sputum. We take sputum and we put a special stain to look for the bacteria. That stain is called acid fast bacilli. Bacilli means bacteria stain. Acid fast bacilli staining, commonly called as AFB. So if the uh, bacteria is there, it is called AFB positive. It is called AFB positive. So after that, what we do is we take this sputum and we put it in the culture. We allow the if the bacteria to grow in the lab. So if there is presence of bacteria, then we confirm it is a tuberculosis. We confirm it is a tuberculosis, but it takes 10 weeks of time. It takes 10 weeks of time. Nowadays, we have a special advanced culture that takes two weeks of time. Previously, it used to take 10 weeks. So now it is uh, taking only two weeks in a special labs. <coughs> then we do a special test called PCR test. You all know PCR? Huh? No. It is called polymerase chain reaction. It is called polymerase chain reaction. This is the test nowadays everyone is doing. Okay. This test detects even one bacteria. This test detects even one bacteria. So even small number of organisms. Okay. So even 10 organisms or even one DNA of that organism is present. This test will detect it and that is called PCR amplification test. So what is the name? Polymerase chain reaction. However, still till now, the most standard gold standard of all tests is culture. Okay. So the person's sputum or biopsy material should have bacteria. If they have bacteria, it will grow in the culture. It will grow in the culture. If the culture is negative, then we will doubt the person is having tuberculosis. Okay. So culture is still the gold standard method or the PCR should give evidence. So these are the different investigation we do in the lab to diagnose tuberculosis. Okay, now coming to the slide, actinomycosis. Actinomycosis, again, it is a bacterial infection. It is produced by the bacteria called actinomyces israeli. <coughs> that is the bacteria which produces why we are discussing to the dental student because it comes in the head and neck region it comes in the head and neck region and most commonly seen in the cervicofacial region 50% of the infection comes in the cervicofacial region other regions are pulmo thorax that is in the lung and the thoracic region other other region is the abdomen pelvic region okay abdomen and the lower abdomen region but most commonly seen in the cervicofacial region and it is it produces granulomatous inflammation it produces granulomatous inflammation and clinical manifestation are they produce fever a hard tender means if you touch it will be painful it will be painful very hard tender lumps means swelling okay sometimes they have opening sinus like this and if you see there will be black color spots black color spots that is called sulfur granules that is called sulfur granules you can see in, in the abscess and weight loss and the person may have lymph node swelling okay in the around the neck so that is the characteristic feature of acnomycosis this picture dr sylvester will show in the lab okay the lab we have a case uh, it's very common case okay acnomycosis so once again i'm telling it is caused by the bacteria called acnomyces israeli and it produce granulomatous inflammation and there are three different forms one is comes in the cervicofacial region other one is comes in the thoracic region other one comes in the abdomen and lower abdomen region that is called abdomen pelvic region characteristic they produce fever the most characteristic feature is they produce 
sulfur granules very black color granules you can see in the ulcer which is uh, formed due to the actinomyces israeli this is the bacteria surrounded by full of inflammatory cells okay that silvestre will talk and this ends the actinomyces mycosis and tuberculosis